Hi, this is Brian Forster, and here is my book that I wrote about Petra in Jordan. Now, we're returning in April of uh, 2019, if you'd like to join us at HiddenIncaTours.com. So, this is footage from a couple of years ago, but I wanted to re-look at it and re-edit it into a shorter version, because some new information has come up, thanks to... Uh, some YouTube channels like uh, Jimmy's Bright Insight. So there, if you look there on the upper right, you saw the tool marks that we're going to be looking at. And this is the entrance to what is called the Seek. It's about a mile long. It's a natural feature that um, was created by millions of years of water movement. And most people think that the stone here is sandstone, but in fact, our geologist Susan Moore told us when we were on location that it's more like quartzite. So it's seven out of 10 in hardness, with 10 being diamond. Therefore, you'd have to have very super hard steel tools at a minimum in order to be able to shape what you're going to look at. So as we continue on walking through the seek, there again you see some more of these vertical tool marks, perfectly parallel. And there's a water channel on the left side and the right side. There you can see some repair work that was done. Conventional scholars believe that the Nabataeans, who uh, were an Arabic people, or Arabic people, were the creators. But what you're going to see is clearly this had to have been done in part using very advanced technology. And I think Petra was found by the Nabataeans, and they decided to do some alterations to it. But Petra is absolutely immense. It's 12 kilometers, or 7 miles long. As we walk through the last part of the Seek, we're going to go to the most famous feature, which is called the Treasury, because it's believed that originally it had treasure in it. There's no actual evidence of that. But this is the most famous part of Petra, and this is where 90 to 95 percent of the tourists stop, look, turn around, and leave back through the Seek again without looking at the other 9 to 10 kilometers of this huge site. Now I have to uh, thank our friend Antonio from Australia because he visited Petra before us and he told us that it was absolutely immense, which I had no idea. I thought Petra was this, the treasury and nothing more. But it's absolutely huge in scale. So there again, you see the treasury on the left. And now we're going to start walking through the entire complex, or almost the entire complex of Petra. So you see the ornate carving that is on the treasury? The ornate detailed carving is only on the treasury, not the other ones we'll look at. Unfortunately, this is a chamber underneath the treasury that's graded off, and those that have been inside calculate its size as being 300 cubic feet. And those that have actually been inside the treasury itself, say that in the main structure, the room, again, is about 300,000 cubic feet in size. That's a lot of material to remove using steel chisels. And you would probably need thousands of people doing the work and thousands of chisels, but I highly am highly suspicious that this was done by hand. Now again, there are these uh, flat surfaces with chambers or rooms inside that go on and on and on in Petra. And you can see incredible amounts of erosion as well. That could be from flash flooding over the course of 2,000 years, but I think it's highly unlikely. Again, the treasury is the only one of the facades which is finally finished. The rest of them are quite rough 
and we see similar features like what we see at Petra in some of the oldest structures in Egypt. And I believe the oldest structures in Egypt, again, are much older than the dynastic people. So it is possible that um, Petra and some of the ancient structures in Egypt were initially created by the, uh, the same people. And I believe that that dating is about 12,000 plus years old. Now there is also this massive amphitheater. This could date from Roman times, but look at the flat surfaces of the walls in the background. Again, Petra is a very, very complex and huge place. And as we walked, we went past chamber after chamber after chamber after chamber cut into the bedrock. And as you've seen in many of my videos, um, conventional cultures were in places like Petra. This work is likely from the Roman time period. You see the arch there on the left. But then again, you find other features which are far, far more complicated, uh, much more difficult to do, like the flat surfaces in the stone. But again, standard academics insist that the Arabic Nabataeans were the initial builders and that later the Romans came and occupied the area. Luckily, at least one of these massive chambers is open to the public still. And so we're going to walk inside of here and look at this. This is carved once again out of the quartzite bedrock and its size I estimate at being 300,000 cubic feet in size. There's no way that that was done even by thousands of people with hand tools. We're all also going to see tooling, like here. Perfectly parallel uh, incision marks, like a huge series of chisels. Parallel chisels were used, but they're perfectly spaced. More like um, a whole system of chisels was utilized. And I think, again, there's no way that this was done by hand. The material is too hard, and it would have taken way too long um, in ancient times to do this work. Also we see signs of cataclysmic damage such as in the ceiling. You see massive cracks whether they're natural features or whether they were the result of a cataclysmic event. That's why we're going to be returning in April of 2019. So as we advance along in Petra, this is looking back at what we were just looking at. And yet, Petra keeps going. We reached a point where we had to get on horses in order to continue because it becomes quite rugged. But once again, on the left-hand side, you'll see we go past lock chamber after chamber. There are many more up in the hills that you can see in front. Uh, Petra just goes on and on. And in fact, after 12 kilometers, we didn't even reach the end. Here, some of the stone cut chambers are being used as garages for the, um, the people who guard and protect Petra. And again, the farther we go, more of these quite massive chambers on both sides. There on the left. Finally, we're starting to ascend reasonably close to the end of Petra and it started to rain. So this gives you a sense of the landscape. Some people are continuing with horses. We decided to walk. And we encountered more than 2,000 steps going up. So on the left hand side you see the original tool marks in the, the um, very hard sandstone quartzite material and then you see repair work on the right. So obviously weathering on a massive scale happened at Petra. I believe it could have been the result of ancient cataclysmic damage as well as wear over the course of time. And finally, we reach this structure, which technically is at the end of Petra, but in fact we were told after we reach this point that Petra continues on even farther. So again, you can see that the features are similar to the treasury, but 
not fi as finely detailed. And I think the fine detail work at the treasury was done by Greeks who were hired by the Nabataeans. And if that wasn't enough, we drove another half an hour and we reached what is called Little Petra, which we had not heard about until we actually got to Petra itself and completed our uh, study there. So as you can see, there's this, um, this ancient entrance, very similar to the Seek, but quite a bit shorter. Almost like a, a fortification entrance. Maybe that's what the Seek was too. And then as we walked inside, then we started to see, obviously, that the work done at Little Petra is exactly the same work that was done at Petra. There you see some tool marks above, once again parallel, and then a series of chambers, not as big as at Petra, and all the charcoal soot blackening uh, caused by people living inside the caves over the course of hundreds if not thousands of years. But Little Petra is not as magnificent, but definitely worth the time. If you're going to go visit Petra, do visit Little Petra as well. So here again, we're going into another chamber. You can see the, uh, the tool marks on the walls. And this one actually has a second level down. Again, with our trip uh, in April of 2019, we're going to see Petra in more and more detail. I believe we're spending a day and a half there, which is a great amount of time. And then inside, another quite massive chamber with all the soot on the ceiling, result of habitation by local people. And now we continue on and on again. Little Petra has a, a beginning and an end. After we walk past all of these chambers, then eventually we reach a point where there is a staircase that technically is the end of, Petra, of Little Petra. But in fact, I was told by those more adventuresome than me on this day that once you go up the giant staircase, there's more of Little Petra. So it could be quite possible that there are structures in between Little Petra and Petra, making it one huge ancient archaeological site. Here again, looking at the soot blackening of a ceiling of a quite a big chamber. And then an indented area in the floor. And as we continue to wander through, Again, room after room after room after room. And then worn staircases carved into the quartzite surface. And even more rooms. The whole Petra, Little Petra complex is absolutely massive in scale. And as I said, Maybe 5% of the visitors ever see the whole complex, and that's why in April of 2019, we're going to definitely look at, at it with a very, very uh, eager expectation. So here again, yet another chamber, and then these beautifully parallel cutting patterns in the ceiling. The likelihood that that was done by hand, I would say, is zero at this point. So here we are, almost at the absolute end of Little Petra. And as I said, there's a staircase cut into the bedrock that goes up. And there we have one of our guests who's about to ascend it. And this is returning back out uh, through the entrance. You see the staircase carved in the stone there in the center. Very big chamber there on the left. And more and more. The place is amazing. So this is turning and going 
exiting uh, back out of the entrance. And one of our guests, uh, David, I believe his name is, discovered something very curious. So for, the, so for the last bit of this video, I'd like you to hear what David has to say about the tool marks that he and I found at Little Petra near the entrance slash exit. This is the hand, this is the point where it looks like they changed direction with their handheld tool. Uh -huh. Coming down and then going sideways, but this and I didn't see the first time. That's interesting. Looks like the end of the tool and almost maybe it melted it. Yeah, it looks like it. It's all over at the ends of these points. Uh-huh. Yeah, it almost looks like ice cream. Yeah. So, way more to Petra than you probably thought. And again, please consider joining us in April 2019. We're also going to the Dead Sea, and it'll be a great tour in April 2019. And if interested, I did write a book about Petra, which I may update after our April 2019 trip. Petra, the ancient rose city of Jordan, a virtual guide for those who can't visit Petra in person.